is part of it. So now, light emitting diode circuit. How we are going to connect this light emitting diode LED in a particular circuit? Okay. So now this is a given circuit. So the, in the given circuit, we have connected an voltage source. So positive and negative. Our voltage source is going to have a two terminals, positive terminal and negative terminal. We are going to connect this semiconductors with the DC supply. Okay, not with an AC supply. This semiconductor device will work perfectly with the DC supply. So a DC source, DC voltage source with terminals positive and negative. So from this positive terminal, I have connected a resistance here, a resistance. From this resistance, from the other end of the resistance, I have connected to the LED, light emitting diodes, LEDs. So anode is connected with the resistance and from the cathode, I have connected this to the negative terminal of the voltage source. So this will, this three elements, this voltage source and the resistance and this LED is going to form a closed circuit with a DC source. Okay. So what will happen? I am going to give a supply for this. So from the voltage source, the supply is going to flow through the resistance and then to the LED. From this LED, a color, a color light will be visible based on the material we dope and the level of doping, the color light will vary. Okay, depending upon the uh, materials and also the wavelength and also the level of doping, this color light and the um, the color light and the wavelength will vary depending upon it. And from this, it is going to close the circuit with the negative terminal of the battery. The current will return back to the source again. So starting from the source through the resistance through the LED and it has to return to the source again. So this is one small simple circuit for the LED. Okay. So now you are going to see the working principles, how it is working. Okay, so I this is the outer part of the circuit. So how the LED, what is what will happen when the when you give a voltage force in inside an LED? Okay, so what will happen? The holes in this uh, lie in the valence band while the free electrons are in the conduction band. So there is two bands, valence band and conduction band. So what will happen? This holes will be there in the valence band and the free electrons are there in the conduction band. Okay, when there is a forward bias in PN junction, so when you give a forward bias, what will happen? The electrons which is in the part of N type semiconductor material will move through the PN junction and join with the holes in the P type material. So when I say N type material, electrons are the majority charge carriers. So when I say P type material, holes are the majority charge carriers. So what will happen when you give an electron force, there will be the movement of electrons between P to N and N to P. Okay, the majority charge carriers from each uh, material, from each side will move towards the other side. It will cross the P in junction barrier and will reach the other side. That is, holes from P side will move towards the N and from N side, the electrons from N side will move towards the P side. Okay, that is because of this, there is a movement of charges between P to N and N to P. Okay, this is a normal function in normal P in junction diode also. Okay, this is like a normal P in junction diode. So, this is also like a, the working will be similar with the normal P in junction diode. But therefore, what is the difference we will see? So, therefore, regarding the holes, the free electrons will be at the higher energy band. Okay, so that is, this uh, holes will be in the valence band and the electrons are there in the conduction band. So, when you, when you see for holes, holes are, uh, when re with ref respect to holes, electrons are there in the higher energy bands. So, what will happen? This is what will happen exactly inside the P injunction. So, P type material is going to have majority of holes, same type, uh, N, type uh, N type material is going to have majority of electrons. So, when you give a force for this, there will be recombination. That is first, there will be a movement of electrons and holes between P and N. Because of this movement, there will be recombination. The electron and holes will get together. They will get attracted together and there will be recombination between the electron and holes across the junction. That is immediately near to the junction. So because of this what will happen this when this movement of free electrons and holes takes place there is a charge in energy level as a voltage drop from conduction to valence change in the electric energy level there will be change that is because of this movement of electrons and holes there is a change in energy level as uh, so because of this change there is a voltage drop from conduction band to valence band okay the electron the voltage will drop from conduction band to electron valence band. So because of this what will happen? There is a release of energy due to the motion of electrons. Okay. So when the what will happen? So conduction in the conduction band three electrons are there. As the, as the electrons move from that conduction band, what will happen? There is a energy release because of that movement there is a emission of energy from the electrons. So in standard diodes the release of energy in the in a manner of heat. This emission of energy will be in the form of heat. 
okay normally this emission will be felt outside in the form of heat in the diode we will be feeling a heat because of this movement but in led what will happen in led the release of energy in the form of photons okay so normally in a pn junction diode what will happen the electrons in the conduction band will move towards the valence band because of this movement there is a emission of energy that energy will be felt in the form of heat in the pn junction diode but in this led this release of energy will be felt in the form of photons photons is what photons has a property of emission and giving light photons are nothing but light emitting wavelength okay it is having going it is going to give light it is going to light give light energy a visible light energy okay so visible wavelength of energy which is given with colors okay within different colors so this entire process is known as electron luminance okay so this process this process of giving out photons during the movement of electrons is called as electroluminescence okay and the diode is called as light emitting diodes okay so light when i say light emitting diodes it is going to work same as pn junction diode only a small difference with that what is it is when there is when the electrons in conduction band is moving towards the valence electron valence band there is emission of energy that emission of energy will be in the form of photons this emission of energy in the form of photons we call as electroluminescence and the and the diodes which is doing that is called as light emitting diode okay so this is what we have same same normal process as pn junction diode as instead of heat energy we are getting photons so because of emission of photons we call that as a light emitting diode okay apart from that all the properties all the materials what are there inside the uh, light emitting diode and pn junction diode will be same okay so in, in in led energy discharge in the in the light light form hinges on the forbidden energy gap so what is it Be, between the conduction band and uh, and the valence band there is a gap between the conduction band and energy band this gap we called as a forbidden energy gap so energy is discharged in this gap okay so what will happen the, the photons the emitted energy is photons this photons will be accumulated in this forbidden energy gap One, uh, one could manipulate the wavelength of the light produced because of this that for because as this photons are emitted in the forbidden energy gap you can modulate manipulate the wavelength and color and also visibility of this photons okay so that is we are able to control the lights which is emitted from the light emitting diode okay so uh, this is the important characteristic why why we are going for light emitting diodes as it is as it is giving em emitting light during the movement of movement of electrons but it is also we are able to control the light emission okay we can easily control the light emission not only controlling we can manipulate the wavelength we can change the wavelength and we can replicate this so all sort of controllability are available in the forbidden energy gap so because of this advantage only we are using leds widely everywhere okay and so this this is the main property which we are focusing on uh, for led we are going to see about the uses of led okay so led find its application in various field including optical communication alarm system security system remote control operations robotics etc okay it, why because um find it it is finding its uses everywhere why because of its cost is low or making charges less okay it is high, giving high efficiency and it is also available in different colors okay different attractive colors are available in leds because of this easy and uh, application and it is also capable um, uh, that is low costing and capability that is we can transfer this leds everywhere easily it is very handy and it is very small we can use in our we can have it in our pockets also so it is very small and it is handy so we can have leds everywhere okay so leds also used in tv backlighting okay backlights of the tv displays automotives and it is used in dimming of lights okay everywhere we are using leds same way uh, this led have various types okay there are various types of leds we are here we have so in that miniature leds first type one is miniature leds high power leds flash leds bi and tri color leds red green blue color leds alpha numeric leds and lighting leds so these are the different types of leds we have we have very 
depending upon the colors we have depending upon the characters alpha numeric characters so alphabetic numerical and alpha numeric characters also we are have in leds and we are using a flashlight okay so by and dry color not only single colors we have we can have two colors two colors in same light three colors in same light so different color combinations we can have in the leds same so, miniature small 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 LED, leds also we can have high power not uh, depending upon the power ranging also power rating also we have various types of leds okay so these are the types of leds and applications so applications we apply everywhere All, already i said the uses in the same way we have application so electronic displays, uh, uh, displays in the electronic displays we are leds our wide known example is our tv led tvs we have so the display is made of leds okay so inside the inside that we have leds as the LEDs is applicable for all colors, so we are using for display. So it is going to accept all the color variations, whatever we are, we are going to broadcast from the source side. All everything is visible inside the LEDs. So electronic display such as OLEDs, micro LEDs, and quantum dots, etc. So quantum LEDs also we have as an electric LED indicators. Indicators. Indicators means it is like a buzzers. So to display yes or no in and out in that condition also we can use as leds and in remote control so in the remote controls a direct light will be there a small light will be there so from with that we can control the uh, uh, or by with that we can control the remote operation in that okay so lightning different lightning stages and also in the opto isolator so isolation purpose also we can using for we are applying leds okay so these are the different applications of leds so with this we are going to end the led topic next we are going to going for photodiodes so photodiodes what is that photodiodes what is the difference between actually what is the difference between led and photodiodes so led diodes led i said light emitting diode here i am talking about photodiodes so both are going to be diode okay both are going to be diode so do, it is a semiconducting material so when i say diode it is going to have p type material n type material so how how does the operation how the operation of photodiode and light emitting diode is going to vary how it is functioning that is what we are going to see now okay first i'll say about photodiodes photodiode is a special type of pn junction that a diode that is going to generate current that is going to generate light when it is exposed to it is going to photodiodes photodiodes so photodiodes means it is a special type of pn junction device that generates current when exposed to light okay so now in the light emitting diode we saw when the electrons is moving from conduction band to valence band uh, uh, energy will be released that energy will be in the form of photons okay so because of that photons we are getting a light emission there but here when i say photodiode this photodiode will be generating current when it is exposed to light when you are taking the photodiode and it is showing in our bright light the current will be generated inside the pn junction diode photodiode so such type of diodes we call as a photodiode okay it is also known as photodetector or photosensor okay this also we call as a photodetector or photosensor okay so it uh, so now how it is operating so what is the difference between pn junction diode and photodiode is pn junction diode led will be operating only in the forward bias direction but this photodiode will operate only in the reverse biasing mode okay only during the reverse conduction the it will con convert light energy into electrical energy okay it is going to convert light energy into electrical energy so till now we have seen electrical energy is converted into light energy with the help of photons but here in the photodiode we are going to see it is going to convert light energy into electrical energy okay so this is the symbolic representation of photodiode so when i say photodiode this with the same symbol of diode so this is the normal symbol of diodes this arrow mark this red color arrow mark is there now this indicates the arrow mark is towards the diode towards this symbol so this indicates photodiode but when i say light emitting the leds this arrow mark is here it is it is shown outside okay it is shown here and it is shown in the outward direction so outward direction indicates it is an led same with the same 
for a pn junction diode symbol the arrowhead which is flown which is shown towards towards the pn junction diode symbol then it is a photodiode okay so a small difference in the arrowhead only between the led and photodiode so this is the symbolic representation of photodiode so now next is principle of photodiode so it works with the principle of photoelectric effect okay so photoelectric effect okay why because from the light only we are getting the because of the light energy only we are we are getting the electrical energy so we, we by combining both two together we are making giving a name as photoelectric effect okay so the operating uh, principle of the photodiode is such that when the junction of two terminal semiconducting device is eliminated then the electric current starts flowing in through it only minority currents will flow through the device when the certain reverse potential is applied to it okay so now what will happen so when you do forward conduction what will happen there will be conduction because of majority charge carriers okay so from the for p type poles for n type electrons these are the majority charge carriers in p and n type material this will occur in forward forward bias direction but when you do reverse bias direction what will happen the current the it is the for the biasing the supply whatever we go giving is reversed because of reversed conduction what will happen the minority charge carriers are in p type and n type material will start the conduction in the reverse bias direction so when a small conductivity is there because in p type material majority charge carriers are holes and very minority charge carriers are electrons same way when i go for n type material majority charge carriers are electron and the minority charge carriers are holes here so because of this very small amount of minority charge carriers when you expose this uh, diode to the heavy light a small amount of current will be uh, generated in the photodiode because of why a small amount of current is be because of the minority charge carriers in the diode this uh, diode is conduct conducting only in the reverse bias direction because of this reverse bias direction and the current flow is only because of the minority charge carriers a small amount of current will be generated when it is exposed to the light okay so this is the principle of working of the photodiode so now we have we are going to see how it is working now so this is a normal pn junction diode okay so this is a p, p region and this is your n region okay this p region is your anode and this this n region is your cathode region okay this uh, this green color uh, barrier is there na? this will form the pn junction okay this barrier will is going to form the pn junction that is a, a, a boundary between p type material and n type material okay that is what pn junction okay so from pn will be your anode end and this n region will be is your cathode end okay so this is your structure of photodiode here i have silicon nitrate coating okay so at the top near your anode we have a silicon silicon nitrate coating here also a diffusion layer this is your diffusion layer of your silicon nitrate coating so when you do conduction what will happen this is the con uh, this how we are constructing this is the construction detail then this is how we are constructing a photodiode along with p type and n type material we are having a silicon nitrate coating okay silicon nitrate coating along with this p photodiodes to increase the conduction okay so a pn junction is a device placed inside a glass material so we are going to keep this is inside a glass glass material why because why we are using glass because we are going to expose this to the heavy, small light radiation that light radiation should be transmitted inside the photodiode well, because of that light transmission only there will be conduction because in the because of the minority charge carrier so so because of this we are going to keep this pn junction device inside a glass material this is done in order to allow the light energy to pass through it okay so to allow the light energy to penetrate inside the pn junction we are keeping this inside a glass material as as only the junction is exposed to radiation the other portion of glass material is painted or paintized or metallized okay so what we will do only that but a junction pn junction should be exposed to radiation okay no need to expose the entire part or the entire setup need not to be exposed so we are going to expose only the particular pn junction portion alone so apart from that pn junction all the other thing will be metallized means it won't it will be sealed okay the radiation will not enter into that okay it will be sealed completely okay so the overall unit of unit of very small dimension as 2.5 mm 2.5 mm only will be exposed 
to the light okay a small because a pn junction is going to be a small very small uh, a small thing okay a small device so only 2.5 mm a, a portion of 2.5 mm length of dimension will be exposed to the heavy light okay so because of the small portion exposed a micro amperes of current will be generated so when you measure this current using an ammeter a small very milliamps of current will be generated milliamps or microamps of current will be generated because a small portion is getting exposed in that small portion to be exposed a minority charge case which is to be which is a less thing which is a, which is in less number of count inside a pn junction diode because of the less number of count a very microamperes of current will flow inside a pn junction okay so this current can be measured with the help of the ammeter by connecting an ammeter it can be measured so now working of photodiodes in photodiodes a very small reverse current will flow in the device it is termed as dark current why we call as the dark current is it is going to flow in the reverse bias direction it is called it is so called because the current is totally the resultant of flow of minority charge carriers and it flow when the device is not exposed to radiation okay okay so that current that is when the device is not exposed to light a small reverse current will flow naturally in a circuit so that reverse current we call as a dark current okay so normally i have said this is a setup okay this is a setup of deflation layer that is formed that is p type and n type material so when i say p type material poles are the majority charge carriers and when i say n type material electrons are the majority charge carriers so what will happen this working is based on the reverse bias characteristic that is due to minority charge carriers so what will happen the electrons will move electrons and holes minority charge carriers will move between the depletion layer and there is a barrier created between the along the depletion layer uh, depletion region that is in the pn junction boundary okay uh, because of this a small reverse current will flow that is we are going to measure using the ammeter this ammeter, this current will be in the form of microamps okay as a little current will flow okay so that is what i have explained here here electron present in p cell and holes in the inside of minority charge carriers a certain reverse voltage is applied that in the reverse uh, minority carriers holes in the inside is experience a repulsive force from the potential of the battery as yes. this will occur naturally why right? because we are to get to changing the terminals okay so positive force will give a refer, um, negative terminal will give a repulsive force across the electrons and the positive uh, positive terminal will give a, re, a repulsive force across the holes so because of this repulsive force a barrier will be created barrier potential will be created near the pn junction okay similarly electrons from p side experience a repulsive force from the negative potential of the battery due to this movement okay due to this movement electrons and hole recombine at the junction resulting resulting depletion region at this junction okay so this will happen so due to this movement a very small reverse current will flow and this small reverse current is called as a dark current okay so this movement of electrons we called as a uh, because of minority charge carriers we called as a dark current now the combination of electrons and holes at the junction generate a neutral atom at the depletion region due to which there is no further movement okay so what will happen it will get sealed only few electrons are there so it may be it which may be a countable one so because of this what will happen after the recombination of electron holes pair near, near the junction it will get stopped at one point all the electrons all the minority charge when uh, after recombination there is no left out left out electrons or holes in the pn junction it will be stopped okay so after that there will not be any further movement of other flow of electrons inside the photodiode okay so that is a constant last stage okay so the now what will happen the junction of the device will be illuminated with light so what will happen after that at the last stage after all the electron and holes are recombined there after when the condition occurs that there is no further movement what will happen the device will be exposing giving out a light effect okay that will that is that at that time it should be exposed to light okay illuminated with light then there will be a flow of electrons okay as the light falls on the surface of junction then the temperature of the junction get increased this cause electron holes to get separated from each other so what is happening so after the uh, constant stage we are going to expose that part to the light because of the light what will happen a heat will be generated inside the pn junction this heat will make the electron and holes to get 
separated from each other okay so our two set of separates uh, our two gates separator the electrons from inside gates attracted towards the positive potential of the battery and similarly holes gate electro hole, holes present in p side gets attracted towards the negative potential of the battery so what will happen same way and because of the repulsive force as it is recombined and, is, and they, as they have moved from the barrier barriers from their own uh, from one side to other side electrons which is present inside gets attracted towards the positive terminal of the battery same way holes will be attracted towards the uh, negative terminal of the battery so because of this there will be again a movement reverse movement of this electron holes towards the battery there will be a current movement because of this reverse movement and there will be a flow of current with the circuit okay with the rise in light intensity more charge carriers can be generated okay if you increase the intensity of the light more charge carriers will be generated and there will be flow of current will be occurring in the device continuously okay so this is the working of a pn junction diode okay so the characteristics when when you see about the characteristics i'm going to draw the because you are concerned only with the reverse bias current direction i have drawn only the reverse characteristics here with respect to voltage and current okay so this is your voltage and this is my current here so this a small leakage current okay the small current is flowing initially that is that current we called as a dark current be before exposing it to the light a small current will flow that current we called as a dark current here then a reverse current is flowing okay this is your reverse current direction and this is your forward bias voltage so from 0.5 volt it is a forward bias voltage after forward bias it is going to we are going to keep the diode only in the reverse conduction so uh, we are mainly concerned only with the reverse stage so after forward bias after uh, breakdown voltage the voltage will become current and voltage will become constant okay this is the forward bias this is the characteristics of voltage and current here okay so same way this is the characteristic between current and luminance okay luminance is what the amount of uh, uh, bright light whatever we get that is our luminance effect so depending upon the current value 200 400 microamps 200 microamps 400 microamps the luminous essence, uh, essence is increasing depending upon the current increasing the luminous bright effect is also increasing in a photodiode so advantages of photodiodes it shows a quick response when exposed to light okay a photodiode offers high operational speed the speed of operation of photodiodes will be high it provides a linear response linear response means what a magnitudely steady increase of voltage and current okay it is also low cost low cost device. so nothing we are going to have a, a extra with this just a so it is a low cost device now disadvantages disadvantages of photodiodes so it is a temperature dependent device and shows poor temperature stability okay it's a temperature dependent device because we need a temperature temperature is nothing but the light whatever we expose because of that light light uh, at temperature uh, heat will be generated so if the high heat is generated more electrons will be separated from the pn junction so because of this it is a temperature dependent device okay when low when low illumination is provided then amplification is necessary that is low illumination means what if the brightness is less you need to amplify that to increase the conductivity okay so application of photodiodes photodiodes majority find its application in counters and switching circuits and optical communication system and it also used in logic gates and encoders and decoders okay in encoding and decoding circuits we use photodiodes then alarm system okay so alarm system in the it is also in, in alarm system everywhere we are using alarm system means we um, straightly we are going for LED lights because that red color big light is my it is very attractive the color and the intensity so because of that we are going for led lights okay now the topic is laser laser we know so laser is found by charles twang towns okay nobel prize he got the nobel prize for this laser in physics by 1964 okay he found this in bell laboratories okay so was he found this based on einstein's idea of particle wavelength duality okay so laser is found based on the concept of particle wavelength duality okay so that is because of this um, we are making we are able to find everything in a microwave so laser laser is found by charles towns and arthur schwallow and bell laboratories they found they won the laser uh, nobel prize for this laser 
they found this laser by using particle wavelength duality which is an idea of Einstein okay from the idea of Einstein you found this and laser light now what is laser laser means what laser is nothing but on light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation okay expansion of laser is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation okay our device produces a coherent beam of optical radiation by stimulated electronic iconic or molecular transition to higher energy levels what is coherent beam of light coherent beam of light means there won't be any distraction there won't be any deviation in the light beam it is a constant beam okay there won't be any deviation or distraction or di di diffraction will be there in a light beam okay so it is a coherent beam electronic radiation electronic radiation it is a electronic radiation it can be transited to higher energy levels when they return to lower energy levels by stimulated emission they emit energy okay when they return to lower energy levels they emit energy so this is the laser so now properties of laser pro properties of laser is monochromatic monochromatic highly directional coherent these are the three important properties so what is monochromatic means the light emitted from a laser is monochromatic that is it is of one color and wavelength okay ordinary white light is a combination of many colors of light but it has one particular wavelength it is that is it is combining with different wavelengths different wavelengths of colors to one particular combination one of same wavelength it is combining all different wavelengths to same common wavelength that is of a monochromatic property and is directional so how it is directional means lasers emit light that is highly directional okay that is a narrow beam of light okay if you have to if you are pointing the laser in one particular point it will be a it will be directed exactly it is going it will be lighting on the one particular direction alone okay so that is what we call as highly directional same way co coherent what does it mean by coherent is the wavelengths of the laser lights are in, in phase in space and time okay if you have many mixture of wavelengths also different wavelength mixture but it will be a coherent that is exactly it will maintain the time uh, exact time and wavelength that wavelength the time and the direction will be same there won't be any deviation or distraction on anything on the laser so because of this three properties we are using the laser everywhere so monochromatic three i said the wavelength will be same see here here the wavelength will be same okay same uh, same angle of wavelength it is going with respect to time same time same way directional so it, it can just pointed out at one point at same time there is no distraction of the directionality coherence so coherence means what different wavelength different colors of uh, this are all different colors it is incoherent because different colors are different waveforms we have when you go for laser all will be of same color it will be adapting to one particular wavelength and one particular time of what one particular time this is the coherence property okay so with this we are ending up the session now thank you